welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be filming a finished object video. I have finished this sweater and I wanted to talk about it. If you hear any background noises, as always, it's the pup. He is sitting right behind the camera and he's staring me down. It has been a long day. I'm tired. I don't feel great, but I really want to film this video. So we are doing just that. We are in my living room today. I thought it'd be fun to change it up. I thought the lighting was decent so you guys could really get the full effect of my Easter sweater. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in to all the details about my Birkin sweater. So I have been wanting to knit this sweater for two years now. I went on a little maker's retreat that my friend Sierra hosted in Michigan and we went to a yarn store for one of the like activities and they had this Quince & Co yarn, um, specifically Quince & Co turn yarn. I did just post a yarn review video over this yarn and I have to say I absolutely love it. So if you want to hear more details about the yarn specifically, check out that last video. Today we are just going to get into the nitty gritty of the Bergen sweater. So when we were at the yarn store, I loved the arrays of colors that they had in this yarn. And I spent the entire time we were there looking at this yarn, trying to pick out colors. All my friends were helping me and I settled on these. Um, this was in April 2019 and I knew that I wanted to make this sweater with it and I always dreamed of like this perfect spring and Easter sweater. I have this goal to like have a sweater for every holiday, every occasion that I'll ever need and I finally decided this year and at the end of February, just like a little bit over a month before Easter that it was the year. So. I grabbed my yarn off of my shelf and I wound it up and turned it in to the Birkin sweater by Caitlin Hunter. I'm sure you guys have seen this sweater before and if not, you should definitely check out the pattern. The reason I'm making a full video for the sweater and not just throwing it into my podcast is because there is a lot of uh, things about this sweater that I did change because there are some issues with the sweater itself just the way it's designed and the fit of it. And I wanted to talk about those a little bit more into depth and for anybody interested in making the sweater, seeing how I modified it to fit my body a little bit better. As I mentioned, I use Quince & Co turn yarn and this is what I have left over from that. So this one is my main color, obviously, and it's the colorway Cumulus. This is the color I used for the leaves. It is called Kelp. This is Adventure Teen, which is this nice, teal color there. Um, the top purple is called Dusty and then this pinky color is called Terracotta and I absolutely love these colors and how they played together. I was a little worried whenever I was planning for this pattern. I was looking at the color chart and um, a bunch of other people's like project pages because I didn't have like a middle color and I didn't know how like the purple and the pink would play together as you guys can see. I wanted the contrast to be good so I did take some pictures in black and white with like certain colors next to each other just to make sure I was going to like how everything played. I kind of started thinking maybe I should get a yellow or something but I don't really like yellow and I already had all of this yarn so we just dove right in. So whenever I bought the yarn for this project I remember being in the store and looking at the project like the pattern on my phone and trying to determine how much yarn I was going to need for this. So I did calculate for the size small and that was whenever I had no modifications I was going to make. So I bought five balls of, or five skeins, they're 50 gram skeins of yarn. I bought five of the main color and this is all I have left. So we made it. I'm happy there was moments when I was definitely like, Ooh, are you gonna have enough? But once I got to finishing the first sleeve, I was like, okay, you're for sure good. You got this girl. And then I bought one skein of each color and this is what I have left over. So I have a bunch of yarn. That is something that I liked about the turn yarn, the 50 gram skeins. Honestly, if you're making a color work sweater like this, definitely look for a yarn that does come in 50 gram skeins because Unless you're going to use a ton of the color, you're going to have a bunch left over that you're going to, going to have to figure out another project for in the long run. So 
I recommend finding a yarn that comes in 50 gram skeins. I definitely am glad I didn't have 100 grams or I would have a bunch of yarn that I didn't know what to do with laying around. I think I'm going to turn this into some sort of sock, by the way. Anyways, back to this pattern. So that is how much yarn I used for it. And I'm going to show you quickly the whole sweater before we get into it so you guys can see the fit. As you can see, the yoke is a little bit of a longer yoke. I think that's how it is designed. Most people, it comes out longer, um, such as this. And you can see it almost goes straight down. That is because there is no increases in the color work, which I will say was nice because the color work itself is pretty complex. You are carrying three colors at once for most of this part of the yoke. If you are an experienced color work knitter, you may like that. I have knit plenty of color work before. I've even done three color color work. I don't personally love it, but I don't hate it. It's fine. I have gotten used to it. So you should know that going into this, I would not recommend necessarily for a beginner, especially since I do think this pattern needs a little bit of adjusting to get a proper fit. So yeah, it kind of goes straight down. So when you raise your arms, excuse my belly, <laughs> when you raise your arms, you definitely raise the sweater. I did find that if I have the sleeves push up, it's really not as bad. Um, and then the sleeves are designed to be three quarter length. This is pretty much exactly the fit that the pattern is asking for. But I didn't get that just by following the size small like I originally thought. So what I did is I did tons of research on this sweater for years. Uh, I would constantly go back to it. I wanted to prepare myself for knitting this sweater because I had originally I was just gonna cast on whatever and then I watched a podcast where somebody talked about it and how it fit really weird almost like a straight jacket like you couldn't move and that kind of scared me and I questioned if I was going to still make this pattern but I really love the way this looks it's in my opinion the perfect yoke I love it so I knew I wanted to so for the, the past two years honestly I had randomly would go to the project pages I would search the hashtag on Instagram and just read what people did if they changed anything and I would watch YouTube videos like I'd search Birkin sweater on YouTube and listen to what people had to say and then whenever I was ready to go knit this sweater I went back to Ravelry and read a couple more of the pattern pages before I really dove in so I can I could figure out the technique that I want to use to make the yoke better fitting. So one of the things about the yoke, like I mentioned, is there's no increases in this part. So some people were figuring out how to add increases in here and still keep the color chart the same. I was not about that. There's no way my brain can handle that sort of math. So I found this one project page where it said she cast it on for two sizes larger than she wanted to make. And then for the final increase, she only increased to the size that she wanted. So for me, I wanted to make the size small. That was the size that lined up with how I wanted to fit. And so I cast it on for the size large. So this neckline is the size large neckline. And this is what it looks like. It's nice and like not choking me. I absolutely love that so much. And then for the entire yoke, all the way to this last bit of flowers right here, I followed the pattern for the large. Basically, after I did all of the large increases and finished the color work, your final increase is right before this last set of leaves. So for that, I simply increased to the size small amount of stitches. So whatever stitches I needed for the body for the size small is what I did for here. So I did have to do a tiny bit of math. I just kind of fudged it, honestly. I think I did like every six stitch I increased and it ended up being a little off so I had to tink back a little bit but eventually I got there and it didn't really make that big of a difference in the end but that is how I made my yoke fit a little bit better and I'm so glad that I did that because look how perfectly this fits me right now like there's not extra room let me show you the back there's not any like puckering or anything going on 
And I can't imagine if I made the size small, like I would be able to move my arms beyond this point because right now, like it, it does have like a little bit, you know, it goes up. You can see right here. If I made the size small, I just, there's no way that this yoke would have fit me nice enough. So I do recommend the technique that I use. I am very happy with the fit of it. It was the simplest I found, in my opinion, to do. And overall, it just made for a better fitting sweater for me. Couple of, a couple of other modifications I made. In between these little flowers, there are suggestions to do bobbles. I left the bobbles off. I felt that it would be more timeless without the bobbles. Sure, maybe I like bobbles right now, but in five years, will I still like bobbles? I don't know. And with the color work and everything going on, I did not want to worry about adding bobbles too. So I left off the bobbles. This pattern also calls for quite a bit of different needle sizes and I was just like not about that. So I did a three and a half millimeter knitting needle for the ribbing on all of the ribbing, which is two by two ribbing by the way. This is what it looks like. And then for the color work, the body and the sleeves, I did a 3.75 millimeter needle. I didn't change my needle size for the color work like the pattern suggests going up a needle size. I don't have an issue with my color work coming out smaller whatsoever. I never have. If anything, my color work comes out bigger um, than like my regular stockinette. So I didn't even worry about that whatsoever. The pattern also suggests changing needle sizes in the body about right here. So you kind of get like an A line situation happening. I admitted that too. I didn't really care to do that. So basically, by changing the needle sizes, it would change the gauge and giving you a little bit more room in the body. I didn't really want to mess with that. I do think it would have looked nice and I do kind of wish that I did. For no other reason than I'm like, oh, I mean, it could have been fun, but I don't think it was going to make that big of a difference anyways. I did do the split hem. So yeah, that's that. I know that I knit the bottom ribbing on the front a little longer than the pattern suggested and that was just pure accident. I think I was watching a movie and I was like, oh wait, I can stop knitting this now. And then for all the bind offs, the I did Jenny, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. I do that for all of my bind offs on everything I knit. It's easy, it looks really great, it's stretchy. I know some people have a problem with it flaring out. I'm actually a very tight knitter and even tighter when I bind off, so I don't have a problem with it flaring out at all. But if you do, there's definitely other stretchy bind offs that you can use other than that. But yeah, that is my Birkin sweater. It took me just over a month to knit. I finished it the Thursday before Easter, which was perfect because I wanted to wear it to work on Friday. Um, so I wore it to work Friday before Easter and then, yeah, took some pictures of it on Easter and that's that. Hopefully next year Easter will be a more of an event again. We didn't do anything, me and my family. I just took my dog on a walk and that was literally all I did on Easter. But yeah, I still need a sweater for it and I'm very proud of myself for finishing it. I found with this project that I am way better of a knitter if I have deadlines. I think that's why I like sample knitting so much because I had deadlines and I would always have a finished object in the end. Right now I just have whips all over the place but with this I had a deadline and I finished it in time for that deadline and I was very proud of myself. Um, it did grow a little bit with blocking which I did not expect. You guys can watch the yarn review video. I definitely did not think it was going to grow any because it is an American wool silk blend, but I've never used either of those two things. So I didn't really know what to expect and it's okay. It still looks great. I think it'll fit me for a very long time, which is always the goal when I'm knitting something. I don't want to grow out of it super fast. I wanted it to be timeless and I think the colors I chose are always going to work in my life. And overall, it's the perfect Easter sweater. Yes, it has a bit of a weird fit, but if you can find the, the right modifications for you. I highly recommend this pattern. Uh, again, there are three strands held for most of this color work, so keep that in mind. 
If you're not into color work, you're probably not going to enjoy doing that. For me, I am a finished object kind of knitter. I love having the finished object in the end. So the process of getting there, I don't really care what it takes as long as I get, I, as long as I get it, you know? So now I'm just rambling. If you guys have any questions about this sweater, leave a comment down below. I also did add some more notes to my Ravelry. I know a lot of people aren't using Ravelry right now. I am still using it. For the time being just because I do like to keep track of my knits and it's the only way I'll do it um, so I did add a couple of more details than I normally would to my pattern page because I do want other people to understand more about the sweater and how you can make it work for you but yes if you have any other questions though leave a comment down below give this video a thumbs up if you like my sweater or you're proud of me <laughs> and hit that subscribe button for more videos. I hope to film a podcast soon talking about the other things I'm working on. So stay tuned. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.